Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name's Kirby, and this is Curbside Weekly, episode three. We're just about keeping up with the weekly episodes. Uh, I'm gonna try and make this week's one a little bit shorter, um, because they are quite long. So I'm just still getting used to trying to um, condense it all down and try and get enough work still in there so yeah today we are up my units up at the garage um, we've just got some car sale stuff to do um, so for those of you that don't know my main business is a mobile mechanic but about a year or so ago I started up a car sales business with a friend actually he was a customer of mine um, but he's now a mate um so have a look at one of my old videos um you'll see the setup we did have it was just a disused stables uh but we've recently just got the keys to a new garage so we are up there today sorting a couple of um sorting a couple of sales cars out and we've also got to move all of the cars that we have got stored at the stables we've got to move those out of the way um, and also part of the car sales sort of setup we are offering car servicing repairs whatever um, so yeah that's what we're gonna do today so I'm gonna show you the garage so here we go we've got this transporter in just for brake pads and discs all round if you look at the state of these they're not great so yeah we are just in the middle of putting these on we have got Paget for this these nasty little Icas um, they are for an Audi tomorrow uh, the customer just wanted the cheapest possible um, so these I don't really recommend but they'll do a job they'll stop the car um, won't last as long but there you go um, customer wants it that's it for the day brakes are done all round got the cars in the workshop move the mark 2 over just about started the old transit run out of electricity got that back now temporarily right let's close up okay. yep yeah. lights off welcome back guys it's tuesday we are just on a service so as you can hear just got the engine running just jacked it up sorting out my mats so just in case no oil gets anywhere um, and I think I've got to start trying to be a little bit more efficient when it comes to servicing because I end up um, dawdling dawdling is that a word I don't know yeah servicing work should be nice quick easy work and then I end up being there for longer than I really want to be um, so it's just about getting everything in order so normally what I do warm up the engine drain the oil start doing like spark plugs or whatever filters and I do all of that and then I forget about I don't forget about it but I just forget how long the rest of it takes the paperwork the um, checking over the car putting the computer on stamping the book um, so maybe I might try something different on this one, we'll see. I'll try not to bore you with the actual physical work because it's just servicing, draining the oil, spark plugs, air filter. You saw me do one on last week's um, weekly. Um, pretty much the same setup. Air box, spark plugs under there, oil filter down there. We'll have a look over the rest of the car. All the suspension brakes, things like that, tyres, um, yeah, because this is their only car at the minute, so he said, just make sure everything is um, 
right with it. So we'll get started. So yeah, I thought I'd just go with the oil out. I've cracked off the oil filter and I thought I'd take the coil packs out because they can get stuck. So whilst the engine was warm, I got them out. And then we've gone for some Bosch um, Iridium plugs. They're the same plugs that come out, but you can just see the difference in the tips. See how worn that down is compared to that one. So yeah, I'll we'll get those stuck in. Right, after uh, saying all of that, saying I might do uh, do things a uh, slightly different way around. I just done it the way I always did it. Um, so I drained out the oil. At the same time, I thought whilst the engine's hot, I'll get the uh, coal packs out. And I thought, oh, while I'm here, might as well do the air filter. So I've done that. Um, checked over the car, actually, you know, very good condition car. I can tell it's been looked after. Front discs are a little bit lipped on both sides. Um, there's a couple of exhaust rubbers that would just, they're probably a bit loose um, and they just moved along to the end of the little hooks on the exhaust. So I'll just put those back in. Um, but other than that, quite a clean car. Now I'm just resetting the light, gonna check for fault codes and things like that. And I left the pollen filter till last because look at this palaver. I mean, I probably didn't have to take the screws off that go there and there because um, there are little clips that go. So this sits in that way and there's little clips. You can just see that go there. Um, but I just jumped straight in and got the screws out. It's no real extra work, but you can see what happens because it's such a tight squeeze. These pollen filters all get squeezed up. Probably still do a job like that, but let's take that one out. Go get a new one. So we just compare this one and this one. So we're going to try and get this one in there without scrunching it up. So we're going to go in from up here, I reckon. And just guide it into the top. Guide it into the bottom. Should only need a little one finger. There we go. That's sitting nicely. There we go. I just thought I'd show you with it on. So those are clips that just clip off from behind and you can pull this back. And it just bends at this crease but i've done it that way and it works right so that service is done yeah nothing to it really um i'm assuming if you follow or subscribe to me well you'll have watched loads of servicing videos and you know unless you want a how-to video then they're not that interesting so just skip through that um and now i am on my way to do a bit of diagnosis on a car for, for a customer. I think it's a misfire from what she was explaining. Um, so we're gonna go there, check it out. Um, and then after that, um, we've got the lower arm and ball joint from the transit that I went to for my fleet customer. Um, and that should be it for the day. So I'm praying that uh, transit lower arm comes out or the bolts come out. They can be troublesome, so we'll see how that goes. And just a little word on subscribers. If you're watching this now and you're not subscribed, please do subscribe. It really helps. Gives me motivation. Um, again, just, you know, leave me a comment. Tell me about something about the video you like or dislike or, you know, I like the interaction of doing all of this. This is why I do it. At the time of filming this, I have got, I think, about 1,200 subscribers, which is, yeah, I mean, I, th I think that's amazing, to be honest, you know, I just started doing videos because I like doing it, um, makes my day a little bit more interesting, keeps me occupied or keeps my mind from wandering, um, so yeah, if you're watching, please subscribe, 
Um, I guess the next milestone is uh, 5,000 subscribers. We'll see how long it takes me to get there. Um, we're now in November, end of ish November. <laughs> So next up we got this Nissan Micra. Sounds like a misfire. Um, and if I just take you over to the exhaust, wherever that is, just under here, you can hear it popping. So we are just gonna go in with the computer and have a look, see what uh, we can see. We've got the engine light on there as well. Right, so as you can see, we've got a misfire on cylinder three. So I've just come into live data and there's no um, misfire counter. So um, what I'm gonna have to do is clear this fault, swap the coils and the spark plugs about and see which um, where the fault moves. Okay, so following on from last week's madness of designers not making things very well. So you can see coil pack here, coil pack there. And then the last one is under this inlet manifold. Make it make sense. Look, just in there. So in order to get to that coil pack, you've got to remove the inlet manifold. You've got bolt there, bolt there, one down there, and there's probably a couple down there. But the problem being with that is you then got to get new seals for this because every time you take this off, more than likely the seals are going to be knackered. Um, so luckily we've got a misfire on cylinder three, which is this one. So we're gonna swap this one with this one for now and see if the fault moves. Right, so with those codes deleted, engine light is out and I've swapped those plugs around. Obviously, because we've got no live data, it's a bit annoying because I'd be instantly be able to see what uh, coil is misfiring or what cylinder is misfiring. But I think I might have to take it for a drive. I mean, you can hear it. It's only a three cylinder, so they don't sound the best at the best of times. So I'm gonna take it for a quick spin see if the engine light comes back on, see what cylinder it's on, go from there. I'm hoping it's a coil pack because I don't really fancy taking the inlet manifold off. Okay, so we're back from our little drive. Engine light is still off. Misfire is obviously still there, but we have got cylinder two misfire now. So that's confirmed it. Nice, easy, quick diagnosis. Um, Sorry, that was the wipers. Quick diagnosis. Um, yeah, I'm gonna shoot off, go get a coil pack, pencil coil, and um, should be running all sweet. Okay, so I won't actually be going off to get a coil um, because there's not any in stock, so I've got one ordered up. Hopefully it should be here this afternoon. So, Right now, I'm gonna go and grab some lunch and then I'll go to this transit for the lower arm and pull joint. Hopefully get that done with no issues. But now I've jinxed myself. I shouldn't have said it. I'm, bolts are gonna snap. Gonna be rusty, rusty nuts. Nobody likes rusty nuts. Um, but yeah, that's what we're gonna do. I think either come back here to the 
customer's work address or she lives around the corner from my house so um, we'll go to hers right here we go back on this lower arm so a few potential pitfalls so you've got this bolt long bolt goes up through there up through the bush you can really see that now um, and then there's a captive nut just in there so sometimes they've got a tendency to spin um, and then you've got this bolt here goes through this bush just in here so hopefully that's not seized in there and then we've also got the ball joint but because we're doing the ball joint as well we might be able to just take it all out as one we'll see okay one bolt down the little nut up there probably can't see it but it was starting to spin so you can get a spanner just up there hold on to the nut gunned it off and out it come so that's that one done we'll try the back one now great success two for two These also haven't snapped. So the last thing we'll be actually getting the ball joint out of the hub, the knuckle. Okay, so this uh, ball joint was pretty difficult to get started to come out. So I'm about to get a bit of heat on it. So just warming up the knuckle here. And excuse the noise, but it's hitting on the wishbone here. It's coming. There we go. She's out. Loads of corrosion on there. We'll uh, clean this part up. Wasn't too bad, dare I say it. Um, <laughs> there we go. That bush was just completely swinging around. Right, so to get this ball joint back in, pretty hefty. I've got this um, ball joint removal and install kit. Just wanna find a sleeve that will go over the rubber boot and just sit on this shoulder here. All right, so we've got this sleeve here and you just put that over the top there and you can see, bring it forward. See, it just sits on that and it's not touching the um, boot. It's, it's not quite the right size, but it's the best one that will miss the boot and catch the boot. Could do it that way. That's it, that's, that's better. That's gonna work, brilliant. So we're just gonna put it in, put some oil around here, oil in the hub and push it up. Well, that's cooled down a bit. Ideally, I'd still want that hot. I'm going to put some oil in there. Oil on the ball joint. 
Now the reason I use oil is because it is obviously quite slippery, lubricating. Um, but also when you're pressing this up into such a tight space, um, the grease, if you were to use grease, wouldn't fill the gaps and be, uh, shall we say, resistive. I don't know if that's the right term I've got going on. Nearly forgot the little protective cover. So, what we're gonna do is just line it up. Oh, the light's died up there. Gonna line it up like that. Line that up. Give it a, a bit of a start. So that's just started in there. Then what I want to do is get some, might have these old bolts that are long enough. Uh, not quite. That's now lined up. I'm just gonna see a little bit too far just want that going up nice and even so that is high enough on one side just to get a thread started slowly tighten the bolts as we push it up I don't want to pull the ball joint in with these threads all right, as you can see, that is all done now. That did take a while. Um, just wanted to do it nice and slowly and make sure I didn't nick the rubber boot. So that's all good. Um, now just to get the arm in, finish that up. All right, that's the wishbone done. Um, there was actually after all of that, um, some play in the track rod arm as well, but um, I couldn't feel that the other day through um, the play in the ball joint and that bush. So, um, but that should get back back through its MOT. Um, now I'm just gonna go pick that coil pack up if it's arrived, which they said between three and four, and it's now five, I think. So gonna go pick that up because it's only around a corner drop off at home, fit that, done for the day. There we go, back on the micro. So I'm just gonna swap this number two, because remember it moved to number two. So don't go replacing number three, replace number two coil. There we go, nice Delphi unit there. So let's start her up. Right, let's start her up. Make sure she's not in gear. the embassy they received training from it it's very much used ah, so the engine lights come back on obviously when she drove home but sounds a lot better take you to the exhaust you can't feel it popping and banging anymore so we'll just get the computer turn that light off Job done. But yeah, that's me done for Tuesday. See you tomorrow. Right, welcome back. It's Wednesday. First job. Ford S Max, and we're in for a starter motor, which is just buried down there. So we've got the two top bolts off. There's one up here, one up there. Two 13s, there's one underneath. Um, <clears throat> bit tight for space we know how I like getting parts out of small places which look like they should come out <clears throat> but at the minute the um, starter motor is just sort of seized in there and just probably just got a bit of corrosion built up trying to use the blunt end of two um, extension bars and a hammer just to whack it off but it's in there pretty tight so but we can carry on going, giving it a tap, bit of WD-40. 
So start motors out, a bit more of a tap. Then um, I disconnected it from the alternator because there's a cable that runs round to that. So that just gives it a bit more space. So we're gonna see if it will come up through this gap or it'll be a pig. So yeah, it didn't come out too bad. There's the other one, it's full of oil. So something's been leaking on there. Just gonna make sure everything's the same. We'll get that thrown in. So there we go, start motor is in. What I did to make my life easier, I disconnected the main cable. Um, comes off a clip here um, because the bit that goes on the end where you put the two bolts on it was just a bit uh, tight so I've just loosened that off and it was a lot easier getting in so bolt back in just gotta button it all back up flick it over see if it start okay so the starter is in first flick of the key Nothing. That seems like a battery. Right, she did mention there was a battery drain going on as well. So I just thought I'd um, explain that one. So um, I got the call, new customer. They'd apparently already done their own checks um, and come to the conclusion it was a starter motor. Um, they didn't want diagnosis um so um yeah just basically went there fitted it same sort of problem um i didn't have time to actually sit there and diagnose it but it could be a number of things bad earth um maybe maybe not um because i tried jump starting it after because she had mentioned the battery drain that was that job and I've just been to a Nissan Qashqai for a non uh, loss of power. Basically, it's got no drive. Um, she said she was driving home. Um, she was pulling away and it had no power, no power. And all of a sudden it jerked into life and then it had power. Got home, left it. Next day, went out to it. Wouldn't go in. Uh, it'd go into drive, but it just wouldn't move anywhere. And uh, there's a fault with the coming up with a... Um, clutch pressure plate A so it's a CBT gearbox and I was just doing a bit of research and it looks like the CBT um, gearbox assembly is faulty there's a bulletin by Nissan on it so um, I'll be recommending the, com uh, the customer for that um, just having a bit of grub as the subway so I just got myself a subway slightly more healthier than the golden arches that I have been having the past few days um and then we've got another starter motor to do on a crafter that call came in whilst i was um doing the starter motor on the ford galaxy uh ford s max so we go do that and then we've got to go to my unit fit a caliper to that transporter we've done uh pads and discs all round on the near side rear the caliper was just so stiff to get in so um customers okay to us to put a new caliper on because you know you don't want to ruin the new pads and discs with that caliper sticking on so yeah see you there so second start motor of the day these ones are just situated down there so it's already out vw love it nice and easy so this is start motor Again, customers diagnosed it. We will just test this one. There we go. Another one sorted. Well, one starter motor sorted today, but another car sorted today. Um, so that's it for customers' jobs. Just got to head to the unit, fit this caliper, and that'll be me done for the day. Uh, the time is now 
Uh, I've got to work this out because I haven't changed my clocks. So 3.45, 2.45. It's good going for the day. All right, we'll see you at the unit. Here we go, just back up the unit. Getting this caliper done. TRW. This one's red. Don't think the one I've got is red, so I think you'll lose about five horsepower there. Um, yeah, just taking it off. That's the new caliper on, we're just about to bleed it. And you'll notice I haven't put on the handbrake cable yet. Just around there somewhere. Um, I've got the I've got the pressure bleeder on, and the reason we do that is because you can damage the caliper if you don't bleed it. Uh, push push the pedal down first, um, and then bleed it, and then put the handbrake cable on. You can damage the calipers um, on a lot of calipers if you get them. They normally have a little note on it telling you that as well. And that's it for the transporter. All done. Quite tired for the day now. Um, hopefully we'll be seeing this on the channel a bit more coming up to Christmas. I'm gonna um, start working on it. I'm gonna have some time off from customers' cars and um, I've got this to sort out. I've got a mini Cooper S that just needs a fog light and that can be sold. I've got that Chevrolet over there. Need to put an injector back in it um, and figure out why it has issues on cold start. But yeah, if you want to see more of the Mark II on the channel, let me know in the comments. I've already got one potential buyer for it. Um, but I drove it over here from the stables because it runs, it drives once it, it starts. Battery's knackered. Um, and it was nice to drive. I did like it. It makes me want to keep it. But I know I shouldn't. Uh, just do a proper nut and bolt restoration on it. I'm very tempted. Now I've got this unit, I've got somewhere dry to store it. So. Unit's, it's a decent size unit, but uh, I've, I've tried to fit a few more cars in here than what can actually fit in here. I think it's bigger than it is, um, but yeah, it's good. It's good for the winter. Right, see you tomorrow. Welcome back guys, it's now Thursday. We are back on this discovery from last week, if you haven't seen the video of last week's Curbside Weekly, go have a look. So basically, um, I did rear pads on this about five months ago and the fronts were getting a bit low, so I said just wait until the light comes on, we'll, we'll do the front pads. The light come back on, called back out to do the front pads. I've had a look at the fronts, they are low, but also, The, the rear pads have worn equally as fast, I'd say, as the fronts, which is quite weird. And I'm pretty sure, sure I used Brembo pads at the time. Uh, I'm gonna take these off now. So just putting the electric handbrake into service mode. So on initial inspection, you can see this pad is worn down this side a bit more. This one's, oh, I'll just get an angle. This one's also a bit worn down on one side, which to me would suggest these pins. I mean, they're fairly dirty. They was all cleaned up, obviously, when I done them. So uh, we're gonna try and push that piston back. So you see the new pads, they move nice and freely in there, so no, it's not going to be that next time. These are all cleaned up, that's just a bit of dirt, can put a bit of grease on them. Right, so that's the discovery done, couldn't see anything obvious, 
to be honest. Um, sliders, the, the um, guide pins, you know, they weren't dirty enough or uh, caked up enough. Um, I cleaned up the where the caliper carrier where the pads slide on. Uh, that was probably a bit worse, but um, yeah, they, they still weren't stuck in. Sometimes you get them really stuck in. We're on our way to do a radiator on a Honda Accord, I think it is, or Honda, some odd Honda, old one, um, for the same customer that I done the lower arms on the 107. Uh, like I said, I think I might have mentioned, I think he buys and sells cars here and there. Um, and he bought this one with a gearbox oil leak and the gearbox oil also goes through the main radiator from what I can see. Um, must have a separate compartment. Um, one of the nipples uh, just broke off the last one. So uh, yeah, this is a bit of an ongoing job because he bought another one, a used one, but it was wrong. Um, yeah, this customer, I sort of let him get his own parts on some bits, um, you know, for older cars where the parts might not be readily available from, you know, Euro car parts or whatever. It's just hassle for me to go searching on eBay for them. So I let him get them parts. Bit of a late start today, um, just because <laughs> I don't know, I've been going to bed late, getting up lazily and then uh, I thought I had the rear pads for this car on my van but I didn't so I had to go to a supplier and there was a crazy amount of traffic. It's about 15 minutes from my house um, but probably took me about 40 minutes with traffic. But anyway, I digress, let's go to the next job. So here's the Honda. It's a Honda Legend. And this is the radiator. So you can just see down here, the little nipple was snapped off. Um, I was already here a couple of weeks ago, so I've already removed it. Um, so I just got to take the fans off and replace it. So radiator's back in, just filling up the gearbox oil. There you go, throwing like a kitten. No leaks. This under tray, you have to get some more clips. Uses clips like this. Another stupid invention. They always just break. And uh, can be difficult to get out, so he's gonna need some more of those. But for now it's up and running, back on the 4 Series, already underway. So we've just disconnected the sensors up there, we're under here now. Right, so we've disconnected the pipe, we've had to take a few brackets off down there. This little plastic under tray here. And also this sort of cross beam here. So I'm hoping just to uh, bend, not bend, but let this piece drop. And then we should have enough room just to pull the uh, exhaust out, the decat. So this is the new unit from Dark Side Developments. See the quality on it. Those welds, no welds, just a straight pipe there. So hopefully this one should last a little longer. Ah, oh, I swear it's never easy. Never really easy with cars. So they've got the new D-cat in there, but I believe this is a three inch. This is also three inch. So, Basically, I can't do it one-handed, but this is the same size as this. So we'll probably need either another clamp or some sort of reducer to go with it, maybe. Good 
morning guys it's friday and it's a bitterly cold one today i've already got the hat on jacket i need a new jacket this was just something i found i've got another jacket which i've lost work that one out but we're back on this frv that me and james come to last week for the sticking caliper me and the customer have finally decided or agreed on a price um, with some dirty Ica pads and discs and a padded caliper. Um, not ideal, but it is what it is. I'm just gonna get them done. So. Back in plate, we'll just bend that back or something with that. I mean, it's falling to pieces completely. We might have to just rip it completely off. That's gonna make a noise. We'll show the customer. Look at the color of the brake fluid that's just come out when I've undone. That. It's like rusty water. Get that under there this time. Good little tour I picked up from a trade show. It's like a little um, impact hammer. So you press it down, bang on here, and it'll um, put pressure on the screw and twist. So let's hold it there. Makes light work of those seized in screws. Uh, I can see the state of this backing plate now. So I'm just gonna, it's only being held on there and a couple of strands here. So I'm just gonna peel that off. So also these slide pins <clears throat> are not sliding very well. So this one at the bottom, quite stiff to get out you can see I see the difference of this one and that discovery I did yesterday and this one is extremely stiff but weirdly I'm not as caked up so these carriers are particularly bad I've tried to file down as much of the rust as I can. Obviously the new Ica pads don't come with new um, metal clips. So we've cleaned up these old ones a little bit. There we go, all cleaned up. Smooth. Right, I totally forgot to film the last job. It was just a Mark IV Golf for a window switch. So, just these buttons are broken. The actual electrics are still work, working, but obviously buttons were broken, so just replaced that. Looked at a few other little jobs for him. Um, now we're on this Fiesta. Some of you might recognize from my first ever week in the life of a mobile mechanic, I think it was. Uh, we done um, the little thermostat housing down there and there was the uh, core plugs in there. But we also noted at the time, there was a bit of a leak coming from the radiator, just at this bottom corner. So loads of space, fans already out, you just, push it up, bend these clips back at the top, push it up, slide it out. So I'm just gonna remove the coolant. And I think these come out. I've never done one of these before, but that's what it looks like. 
undo this clip, should come out. What I'll do just to save the customer a bit of money because we've already done the coolant when we've done the thermostat housing. Well, it wasn't the thermostat housing, it was the uh, little coolant flange on the side. Careful, it's probably going to be gushing out. Okay, next step, just take these eight mils out. Then you're able to unscrew the bit that was there maybe allowing it to drop enough but this has got ac so it's got little clips around this back that we have to slide that way so we'll see how that goes right that's the old one out so on the back it's just got these sort of clips it goes round um that slides into the aircon condenser and again same that side and that side bit of a fiddle yeah just slides in under there and then round here on the other side just yeah not too bad a little bit tight but generally speaking not bad this is me for the week there we go new radiator is in just got to test it for leaks bleed it up job done right that's uh my week done or at least Monday to Friday because I've taken on one other job tomorrow just some pads and discs um, it's very difficult being self-employed and an easy job comes in it's very difficult to say no I did say I could come round, I think Tuesday, but he wanted it for this weekend. Um, I don't know how bad they are, um, but he couldn't wait. He wanted someone this weekend. So um, yeah, I said, I'd, I said I'd do it. And then I was meant to do a job last Saturday for a customer, um, a service, but it was my nephew's birthday and uh, we had something planned for him, so went out and done that instead so um, the next time we could both arrange a day would be Sunday very rarely do a Sunday but you know it's kind of my mess up I didn't get back to him with enough time to sort of rearrange so um, and this has been booked in for a couple of months because he's self-employed as well so um, he normally uh, works weekends and that so uh, yeah said I'll do a Sunday for him so yeah for now I'm just heading home I've got to clean the back of the van because uh, yesterday after yesterday I just threw everything in there and I've been working out of a pigsty all week uh, all day so tidy van tidy mind more efficient I'll see you tomorrow good morning guys I wasn't gonna film much of today um, it's just a set of pads uh, pads and discs um, yeah, I just wanted to get it over and done with and get home to be honest, but so it's a Honda a Toyota RAV4 and if we have a look at the pads, obviously it's gone down metal to metal there, but see the difference there and there, they're different, uh, why do they have to do that, why can't they just make them both the same shape? because admittedly I took the other side off and didn't really um, take much notice of the pads. Um, took the backing plates off so I didn't know which one was the piston side. Even took these clips off. Just didn't um, take much notice of it and it was just a bit of a pain getting it back in. But um, yeah. And now this slider is completely seized. So you can see slider should just come in and out but that one is solid i've tried turning it with a bar and it's completely solid so yeah, it's 
good fun. Okay, with a lot of fighting, we got it out. The actual pin isn't too bad, but I think the problem lies in there because why would you have a hole through there just letting in moisture and letting rust build up? You can just see there. So we're gonna try and clean that up. I've already got the file in there, but it's still very tight. So I might get a little drill bit and just see if I can clean it out. And there we go. That's moving in and out nice and smooth. So what I did, I just got a drill bit that was just a little bit smaller than the gap and just in and out, took some of the rust away. So yeah, there we go. Right, so um, I'm home after that. Rub four, really messed my mood up. It was just meant to be quick pads and discs on a Saturday morning, get out early. But it just ended up being a right faff. Um, that slider pin, I was trying to do the customer a favour by, um, you know, keeping him on the road for the day. So I said to him, look, if we can try and just get away with putting the new pads and discs on and have that slider seized, if the wheel moves okay, then, you know, we'll get it done Monday because he needed his car for work today and tomorrow. Um... But in the end, I said, look, it's not going to work. We're just going to have to try and get it out. So heated it up and then got the impact gun on it, twisted it, managed to knock it out, um, get the drill in, drill it out. It was all good. It was just a faff. Um, so, yeah, um, service tomorrow. Hopefully that goes smoothly. Um, I was meant to go out back to that four series no, back to his same place, but for the S3 for two seals for the um, power steering pump line because they were leaking. Um, but yeah, now I'll just have to do a bit of invoicing and quoting for the week. Otherwise, I'll get nothing done. But yeah, um, that's where I think I'm going to end this week's video. Um, I probably won't show you anything tomorrow. So if you've got this far, thanks for watching again. Please, if you're not subscribed, just hit that button, give it a like, and um, hopefully I'll cheer up next week. <laughs> Cheers for watching.